we got most of the corn head stripped down. There's a few sprockets we weren't able to get off yet, but we got everything ordered that we need to put this thing back together and they'll be here on Wednesday. So we have a few days. We're gonna actually drop the head off the combine again and flip it upside down after we get these end schnouts off and do some welding on the frame and do some fixing to some of the slip clutches and stuff like that. We have the hay bind right there and I am going to, I just went through it, greased it up and everything and now I'm going out to check our hay fields to see which ones can be uh, which ones are long enough to go ahead and be mowed now since we have a break in the weather here We are going to put down what we can whether it's blossomed out or not and uh, behind the farm We're gonna knock that down just because uh, It's all weeds again, and we want the alfalfa to come back the first field we have and it is Really really short. I'm not sure if I want to cut this I mean some of the alfalfa is starting to push blossoms as you see but yeah, I think uh a lot of it along through that area. I don't know. Well, that's dead. It's about a foot tall, but you'd only get one, two bales off of this field. And probably same over there. So on to the next field. We'll see what the next one looks like. I passed it on my way in. It's a little bit taller than this, I think. And starting to push blossoms as well. There's the second field. Well, technically the third, since there's two over there. And this one's a lot better. Uh, definitely denser and uh, it's all starting to blossom so I think it's gonna be based on the weather forecast honestly because in a week this is all gonna be completely blossomed so if we can't cut this next week we might as well cut it this week but this is a good three or four inches taller than the other field which is good so on to the next one which is never field a little bit grass here not as much alfalfa but it's even taller than the alfalfa is so this is definitely one we'll cut they are. And here's the fifth field out of nine. This one is real nice. Oh yeah. It's probably the best field of alfalfa so far. The other field was more grass that was really tall. But this one looks nice. If it, none of it's blossoming yet. So if we can wait, we might wait for this one. I'm thinking in my head, if we have a long stretch with no rain next week, we'll probably do the tall grassy stuff this week and then come back and do the alfalfa next week that's just what i'm thinking in my head but dad already knows the forecast and it could just be a waste of time for me to think that idea and also the other field the sits field is right across the road here and that's the one we are for sure doing no matter what it's the one that's really weedy and needs to be knocked down and here's field eight and nine so uh looking from right here nine looks a little short and eight uh, the alfalfa is already starting to die so uh, I'll ask Dad about these ones. The grass is not too short. I'll ask Dad what he thinks about these two. Okay guys, so I'm going to start off mowing over by the field that Dad's mowing by. And I'm going to see if I can stop and talk to him. We don't have any rain for most of next week. At least Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, which are the important days. So I'm going to see if we can wait and do the alfalfa fields next week when they should be bloomed. So I'm going to head down there and get started. We have finished this field and I am going to pack up the hay bind and head on down to behind the farm and try and knock as much of that out as I can tonight. It's already 7.30 so hopefully I can get a good hour in. There has then... been a change of plans. I am mowing behind the farm. I was on my third headland, second to the last one. And this, that hydraulic hose right there with the hose clamps on it, that one decided to blow. and. Man, did it blow. It was all over. My window's completely covered. Now I'm going to have to wash it. If you didn't know, hydraulic oil is extremely sticky once it dries. And I oh, won't be able to see because you get seeds and stuff blown around and they all just get sucked onto it. And it's horrible. So I'm going to deal with that in the morning. Farm's right there. I'm going to walk up and go home. Come back tomorrow, take the line off, take it uptown, and get a new one made. 
All right, so I'm out here at the 4440 and it's got a new line on it. So I'm assuming Uncle Billy or dad came out here this morning while I was doing school and fixed it. Look at this, all of this alfalfa all through this entire area and the whole side of the tractor is all shiny this morning. Oh boy. Uh, I'm gonna run up to the shop, see if we got any rags to clean the windows. And yeah. That is a lot of hydraulic oil. It's all the way out. It's almost to the mower back here. That's how far back that fan just whoosh. That shows how much airflow comes off of these tractors. It's insane. But uh, yeah, one thing I didn't mention with this field is we thought the alfalfa died because we cut this and the alfalfa was right at where we were cutting. And we thought it died because we never saw it and all this came back. Well, it's here. This is all alfalfa all through here. So this is some really good looking stuff. Hopefully it takes off faster than the weeds this time. Uh, Truck's parked. There were no window wipes up at the shop. So I'm just gonna have to run with windows that are really hazy and windows that are gonna get dirty the longer I go. So, yep, dad said the oil's good and the line's fixed. So we are gonna rock and roll and hopefully get this knocked out. Uh, it's past noon at this point so hopefully we can get this field knocked out here pretty quickly hopefully we don't have any more breakdowns two hours later we got that field done so that is all the hay we are putting down this week next week we're gonna do some more but it looks like dad sprayed off the 4020 here and I'm going to put it all back together and pull it out of the way so that I can pull the 44 up wash all that hydraulic oil off so that I don't have it on there for the rest of the time doing hay and uh, spray it off the motor because what hydraulic oil and regular oil does is when it comes all over the motor creates almost like a barrier so it makes the engine run a lot hotter than it needs to and today I was having trouble with it overheating and I think it's just the fact that the entire thing is plastered with hydraulic oil right now so we're gonna get her sprayed off that should get that problem out of the way for the rest of the week. That is what a John Deere 643 looks like without end schnouts and flipped up on its backside. So uh, yeah, it's up so that we can work on these slip clutches. These are what I was talking about earlier and you can see the multiple gears up in there I think. Maybe there's two gears in there and they mesh together. That's what makes them work, but they don't work when uh, they're broke off so there's a few of them that are part we broke off like this one you can see uh, they're supposed to be the other half of the gear right there it's up here and it's down there so this half of that gear is completely broken off and gone and yet it's been running for did we pick up this head last year I can't remember if it was last year or the year before uh, but it's been running for at least a year like that so yeah but uh, you can see on the back side now, you can see these rollers on this head aren't near as bad as what our head was. So these are all right for now. This one's a little bit war, but we'll run with it. And then, uh, yeah, this one, you see we redid the bolts and still we had one loosen up and break out. So we got to fix that, put a new bolt in there and tighten that up again. And we got all of these, this is the bottom plate. Dad is talking about getting poly for this, but I think he's just gonna go through and patch it for this year. There's a, there's quite a big hole right here, which it will be a good spot for losing corn. And right in the center there, which is where I think a lot of heads, this is where this happens. It happened with that one, which you guys know with that stainless steel. And now this one, it's just the aggression of the corn being pushed across it a different direction than the rest of it and 
causes it to rust out. So. All right, guys, I just got done tedding both of the fields that I mowed yesterday. Today is Wednesday now, and uh, I'm going to get the chicken feed ready for tomorrow because now that I've started feeding the stuff I mix, I am soaking it overnight now before I uh, start, before I feed it. So what we got to do, just got to get our bucket right here. And what I do is the amount of feed that I need is uh, a little bit lower than the bottom of the letters there. So I just fill that up. And so there you can see I got the amount of feed that I need just checking to see if they ate it all this morning. This was the first morning that they ate uh, soaked feed. I just wanted to make sure I didn't overfeed them. So I am set on the amount. That is a good amount to feed them. There's a little bit left on the ground. That means they're not like scrounging for it, like they're desperate for food. So that means we did pretty good. So I'm gonna fill this bucket up with water until it, the water's about an inch or two above the feed. So with that guys, thank you for watching and hopefully we will be raking and baling the hay in the next episode. So I'll see you next time. Please like, comment, and subscribe and thanks for watching.